to another episode of Hard Factor, presented by the Barstool News Network. It is What the Fuck Wednesday, June 16th, June 17th. Holy shit. I'm, yes, whoa, yeah, come I on. keep being a day behind. Uh, whoa. I don't know. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, guys. A little bit of housekeeping at the top of the show. Wes is going to be off for a little summer break for a while. He'll be back in a few weeks in July. Pat is going to be traveling for a little summer vacation next week, too. We got some guest hosts coming, right, Pat? Who we got, who we got coming? Yeah, other Pat might be hosting. PFT Ooh. might be jumping in. We'll see. We'll see. A lot of peas. A lot of lot of peas filling in for peas right there. And, and Will uh, and I are just fucking stuck here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I just found out that I'm uh, probably going to be a dad next year if everything goes oh, well. Oh, so, come on. Yeah. Come so on. You're not going on vacation. You're not. You're not going on vacation for the next twenty years. No, that's right. It's going to be. I'm probably going to make it. Honestly, probably going to make it close to six hundred episodes without taking a full week off. Uh, but then you guys mm. are fucked once. So That's you know, amazing, so. Willie. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. The only thing that could break the Iron Man streak is the majesty of life coming. Where is we, we, we do give we do give wait, we're, we're voting. We do give paternity leave on hard facts. Yeah, we do. Well, I was going to say, where Turns is out. Patrick or Patricia ranking? In, well, you don't have to say right now, but just. Oh, know, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, in terms we'll of see. names. We'll see. We don't know the sex yet, so we'll we'll, we'll get into we'll get into the name. If game. if it's a boy and you want to name after me, I'd suggest Marv instead of Mark. I think for you, I'd have to name it Brass, right? Isn't that Brass? Oh, Brass? Yeah. You, you can have Brass, yeah. yeah. After definitely after that, an alloy of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll, we'll get into the names and shit later, but yeah, that's uh, that's mm-hmm. that's what's happening in the hard factor uh, zone. You're freaking out. Off, the off work a little. I mean, of course you are a little bit, yeah. right? Like it's, it's very strange. I saw like. Yeah, anyhow, you already I would, like, it's already I would imagine. Yeah, it's like a, I mean I got I got nervous to go on movie trivia uh last night with Pat, which we lost in. So I imagine having a kid is nerve wracking. Yeah, a little bit more nerve wracking. But comparable. Mm-hmm. But comparable. Yeah, but, I mean close. <laughs> close, close, really. Uh <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, I mean it's what the fuck Wednesday. All amazing, hilarious stories submitted by the Hard O Hive. These ones are extra good today. Pat, get us going. Yeah, and this one is extra, extra good. It's one of my favorites of all time, guys. And it's nice. from Joe Kruger. And at B Schmidt two five five, I think it's safe to say that we've all been in a situation where we've had an internet hater. You guys know oh, yeah. what I'm talking oh, yeah. about. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There's nothing worse. Uh, there's there's nothing, the, yeah, the guys that are I, always I, like I, copying Prez. Like, hey, look at this guy's bad take, Prez. Exactly. <laughs> I've blocked exactly one person on Twitter. I've gotten more than that and hate, but one person in particular. Fuck you, Alec Finn. <laughs> There you have I had it. Had to block Alec. him. He's right. such a piece of shit. And, and there's nothing you can do about it outside of blocking him, right? It's it's yeah. just the worst. And when some loser says something nasty about you, you like you know you're a libtard yeah. loser who brings life. your daily news podcast down, <laughs> or that you look like you're 55 years old even though you're actually 34. It sucks. Mm. Uh, there's a general consensus here in the content biz that you just gotta let the haters hate and don't exactly. don't encourage them. Or as Mark Twain once said, never argue with the fool. Because onlookers may not be able to tell the difference. And he's right. And then Mark Train dropped several hard end bombs for no reason. Very racist right? guy. Very racist yes, guy. But that, very racist. That's yeah. Mark Lo- Twain. Loved a, loved a whiskey, didn't he? Like a mint julep kind Wildly of Wildly racist. And yeah. yeah, and that, that would really ramp the racism. I was like fuel to his racist fire. But guys, that doesn't mean a hater's words aren't hurtful and you wish you could somehow completely and totally ruin their lives, even though you just, you know, publicly let it roll off your back. So let this next story be a cautionary tale. Oh. To all you haters out there and trolls, because e-commerce giant eBay did exactly just that in, in, in ruining someone's life. See, guys, six eBay executives and employees are facing federal charges for cyber stalking and harassment of a middle-aged couple from Natick, Massachusetts, uh, who made the sta- Na- mistake. Whoa, that's Natick, excuse crazy. me. Six. Yeah, they made the mistake of throwing shade at eBay via their online newsletter that covers e-commerce companies. Big fucking mistake, guys, because eBay went after this couple with the same unrelenting ruthlessness that made them the number one in the auction based e-commerce space. Uh, And Mm. I have to say what they did is creative and fucking sadistic. Mm. Uh, Let's get into it. So eBay took issue with the criticism of their company and this couple's newsletter, um, as well as the anonymous comment section. So they were pissed (laughs) that people were like commenting uh, nasty things about eBay and they couldn't. They couldn't find out who it was because it was, it was, you didn't have to, like, register. Well, I'm surprised our phones haven't exploded after that Verizon piece we did. A no, I know. I know. <laughs> so eBay's pissed. And in 2019, two members of the leadership team allegedly sent or forwarded text messages saying it was, quote, 
time to take down the newsletter's editor. Uh, one of the messages is, said the group wanted to, quote, crush this lady, uh, referring to the, the female and the couple. Referring to the mom and pop, like, uh, E-magazine. Wow. Yeah. yeah. This this is, like, a much grander scale of that, like, wedding company that, like, tried to crush the people that ended up not getting married. The guy died. Remember? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this, is like, this is, like, that on a grander scale. Yeah. This is eBay. The difference is a Fortune <laughs> yeah, 500 giant. company. Yeah. <laughs> And one newsletter really, really, I guess, got got their number, guys, because according to the U.S. attorney, Andrew Lelling, the couple began receiving mysterious packages aimed at intimidating them, saying, quote, these deliveries included fly larva, a live oh, box of spiders, a box no, of live right, cockroaches, Whoa. A, cut the show. A, cut, cut the show. I don't, a, I don't even want to. A sympathy reef on the occasion of of the death of a loved one. So they were sending sympathy wreaths as a threat, like a death wreath. Uh, oh, that's like a horse oh head, God. except like less intense. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? A book <laughs> on how to survive the death of your spouse. Uh, mm. And then this is, this is great too. They mailed pornography to the next door neighbors, but in the names of the couples. You know what uh, these guys are? They're like wannabe mafia hard guys, but they're just like, they're just tech bros who, who are sending nameless threats to people. You think they're tech bros, Will, but just wait. Oh. Uh, they also <sighs> sent Halloween masks featuring the face of a bloody pig and the pig feet. They ordered a pig fetus. To send to these, these people. Are, these are crimes. Yeah. These are absolutely crimes. Yeah, well, they're federal charges. But after an yeah. inquiry by the supplier, <laughs> supplier thankfully, the pig feet has never made it. Even it was not fucking around, guys. Uh, or they were, let, they were, you know, they and also the other thing is they weren't putting like some low level minions, tech bros on this, Will. Uh, they allocated some resources in the form of top level personnel from the company, uh, including mm -hmm. eBay's director of safety and security, James Ba. Ebay's director of global resiliency, David Harville, 48, Stephanie Pop, their senior manager of global intelligence, Brian Gilbert, a former police officer and senior manager of special manager of special operations. Oh. It was like a C-suite of McGrubers uh, focused on ruining this couple's <laughs> life. What a bunch of dicks. <laughs> Yeah, guys. Well, they oh really God. ramped things up, though. They really ramped things up on August 18th. What, the, what, what exactly? How bad did the couple get eBay? Like, how bad was I it? I don't know. I couldn't find the newsletter, but apparently. Well, I mean, just... they probably just crushed eBay in a very, like, logical manner because eBay. It is must kind have been pretty infuriating. damning. Yeah, like. Yeah, it must have been. It must have been a pretty good get because the the reaction, something else. I mean, you have north of a million dollars worth of salary focused on messing with this middle aged couple. Yeah, uh, way north. Right. Yeah. So they really ramped shit up on August 18th, just after midnight, when they posted a classified ad on Craigslist claiming to be from Natick uh, and inviting mm. couples, swingers, and singles to their house to party at 10 p.m. every night. And Damn. according to the district attorney, people were encouraged to the ad to knock on the couple's door at any time. They were always ready. Oh. Oh, shit. Yeah. The the employees also uh, would send uh, other employees to Massachusetts to conduct conduct covert surveillance on the victims. What? Uh, they were oh surveilling my... their house? Yeah, man. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. Like like half of the executive suite at eBay is in jail right now? Well, okay. Is that no, what you're saying? Well, all six employees were fired uh, as a result of an investigation. Yeah. But the investigation suggested that a potential conspiracy may have gone as high up as CEO Devin Wang. Oh, of course. Oh, you know oh, Devin Wang got in on it. And it was, you know Wang was like, send me the updates. There's what, this what many high-level people this week? on it. Absolutely. It was known throughout the company oh, they were doing You this might shit. want to check Wang's emails and text messages. Well, he's, he's definitely he's laughing his ass off at this. left the company. Uh, oh. Yeah, would, no shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're going to have to wash their hands of everybody. Yeah, everyone was involved. I everyone kinda, from the low, like that low level executive on up to Wang, everyone was in the know. I admire this. I love this. They're, you they're like doing this is what they did. They ruined Well, yeah, bro. When, when someone says nasty shit about you on the internet, you can't do anything about it unless, well, eBay Look, showed us to the contrary. Yeah, unless you you're a silent the, you, millionaire. Yeah, you can get the haters without the crimes of the fly larva, the spiders, the, uh, <laughs> this, like, you can't just, I like the sending the pornography in their name. That's funny. To their neighbors. That, like, yeah. To the neighbors. Yeah. That's funny. Well, also the Craigslist post that they're, that they're, uh, a sex pad is pretty great too. Dangerous though. Yeah. I guess you're right. You got people like that are very like, real weirdos. Yeah. Yeah. That's very dangerous. That's, absolutely that's a crime. A crime. Yeah. yeah. That's a crime. I respect I like, the, only, for the it. only thing I liked was the porn to the neighbors. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, fuck that. That's like a giant company picking on a, a, an individual like citizens in America. Like, that's fucking terrible. 
Don't Are have they me, all bro. Gone? You, Pat, you said they're all gone. Fuck eBay, by the way, because they suck. No, I think I, we can say I, that now. I'm, I'm vibing on the, eBay. eBay sucks. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, no, I mean as a company, eBay is infuriating. Like, I'm saying these people probably just wrote like a well-worded thing yeah. about like, well, you don't make much money because they make you pay for shipping, and that sucks. Yeah. And then eBay, eBay didn't was get like, any. Yeah. yeah. Well, are, are they, they going to do they, that again? They, though, didn't well? get, they didn't get any easier to use since like 1995. They didn't evolve. They're just like the worst fucking platform. Right. It was a great idea back then, but then like they basically have become better. a thing yeah. that just preys off of elderly people on the internet. It seems like. Yes, well, they're trash. Maybe they're trash. So. They're, and their executives are trash. Maybe so. But my guess is yeah. this couple isn't going to be writing any disparaging words about eBay. I hope soon. this couple gets or, a billion dollars from them <laughs> in the civil suit. Yeah, Pat or anyone ever again. <laughs> Yeah, they'll bring a box. They'll, be, they'll be rich on a beach, not writing reviews. <laughs> no, they're done with the reviews. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take it over to a college football political update. Whoa, that's weird, right? Keep your keep your politics out of college football, but not this week. This is brought to us by the incredible team of Hard Factor interns, Cam, Bubba, and Patricia. And this is a hot topic. Uh, pretty sure by now, you guys have all seen the picture of Mike Gundy. You know, the mm. mullet o- uh, Oklahoma State head football coach on a fishing oh, trip. Yeah. Wearing a One America News Network t-shirt. Have you seen the photo? I hadn't seen it, actually, but I heard about it. I have. Oh. And can you explain what One America News Network well, is? Oh, my goodness. It is a right-leaning pro-Trump uh, news network. I would say imagine Huffington Post, except on the right wing, mm-hmm. right, is One America News Network, basically. So he had a t-shirt that said just OAN, right? Did OAN. It say OAN. Did it say OAN and fuck you uh, or anything like that? Just, or just OAN? No, just OAN and their, their okay. logo. He was uh, had, his, had his arm around some bros at, at a fishing dock uh, after a trip. Well, that did not sit well with star running back at OSU, Chuba Hubbard. Uh, he was not having it. And this is their uh, one of their, I think, only re- returning star players. Chuba said on Twitter, I, I will not stand for this. This is completely insensitive to everything going on in society, and it's unacceptable. I will not be doing anything with Oklahoma State until things change. And that's the quote tweeting the picture of Mike Gundy in the OANT. Uh, Gundy, he then he had a meeting with his entire team after uh, Chuba said that, uh, and it went viral. Uh, and then he released a video after the team meeting renouncing his support, specifically of OAN's coverage on the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, OAN is a place where you see a lot of blue lives, uh, and all lives were. Yeah, we know what OAN is. They, right. they, they, yeah, they finger the base. They just are always hitting the base's G spot. Right. And so basically, Gundy totally, you know, he he came across. He's like, look, this matters to my team. I renounce OAN's coverage of Black Lives Matter. But in the past, he's been like, OAN's real news. They don't got any spin. You know, he said a lot of other shit <laughs> in the opposite way, uh, which has me wondering two things about this situation. Would this have been the same if Gundy was wearing a Huffington Post shirt and a similarly hyper partisan no. news outlet, you know, and a conservative player called him out for it? It's a little different. No, it's a little bit different. No, it would it wouldn't have been okay. Uh, well, but uh, you can ask your second thing. I, I have a, a follow up on that, but no, yeah, yeah, follow it, it, up. It, well, so like, I disagree with with him getting in trouble for this. I disagree with people calling for his fucking head. But when the players on your team, in particular are like trying to say they don't like what the coach is doing, so to speak, or like start to do a mutiny. That's a different story. The coach yeah. has to have the players on their side. So that, that in particular, just because I don't agree with the media going after him for wearing a fucking t-shirt, I'm not in yeah. his, in his locker room. He still needs to make sure his, his players are, uh, you know, feel respect exactly. and, and stuff like that. Nothing yeah. about the response there. I'm asking, I'm just asking about the yeah. cause, you know, had, had, the, I think had it's, the logo I think, been a different, I think logo. if you wore a Huffington post shirt or even further left, he would have not gotten in trouble. I think you can say, I see the comparison you're making, but it's, it's not, it's not oranges to oranges. But apples they're high, both hyper respect. partisan. Yes, they outlets. they both are. They both they both are on either sides. But HuffPo, unlike OAN, doesn't take controversial stances that could hurt people. They take well, overly I mean, liberal they, stances. Well, sure, but I mean that's just the opinion. That's that, in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, I think yeah, it's exactly. also the ti- timing. Yeah, is timing. Great to yeah. be. Aware. Yeah, it's timing it's is time. everything, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned on that. We may have an exclusive response coming from an OAN rep mm-hmm. soon. Ooh. Uh, and also, second question. Would this have gotten the same reaction from Mike Gundy if it wasn't his only returning star offensive player? Uh, I mean, it, what the fuck is Gundy do, doing? Like, I, if you were in a Huff post shirt, it wouldn't be politicized because it's not as politically like hot. But like, well, somebody gave him a so t-shirt. Just, just lay it off. He's wearing yeah. it on a fishing. It was a lake day. I have lots of dumb t-shirts. 
I think Will that had he gotten this response from a- any players that publicly made the response that it would have been similar, um, whether it was a star or second string player. Well, regardless of whether it would or wouldn't, I hope that the spat between the running back and his coach will lead to progress for the Black Lives Matter movement and better mm-hmm. cohesion on the field for the OSU football program. They have not won the Big 12 since 2011, and that's tough a big conference. 12. Tough conference. Uh-huh. Right, yeah. Okay, taking it to the internet over in the Big <laughs> Ten, Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts said that he's antsy to get into phase four of the corona lockdown liftoff since that would allow for 100% occupancy of outdoor stadiums, a.k.a. Memorial Stadium at the University of Nebraska. Where Governor Go Ricketts, Huskers! Exactly. He Go brought, Huskers, get them in the seats. He wants to get blind drunk and wear a corn cob foam hat just like everybody else, so... Remember those option days? Mm-hmm. Get them in the seats. Who was the option quarterback that was so good? Was it? Oh man, my couch? brain's melted because like my my brain's melted because I tried to cram down way before that. that. Or, uh, wasn't there someone before that that was like uh, a Heisman winner? Yeah, but I was trying to cram for movie knowledge and I didn't get any of the questions I studied for. <laughs> well, sorry, uh, but yeah. Anyhow, yeah. that's the that's that's the politics in college football. I hope we never have to do that section again. I don't want to. I don't. I don't like politics in college football. I'm going to throw this out here, guys. Uh, there will be no. After September, there will be Crouch, no, there, Eric Crouch. There will be Eric no Crouch. stadiums at Fulton. And Tommy Castle. Frazier. There, the, 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 the season might open in like late August or September with full stadiums. After September, we come October, there'll be no full stadiums. That's my prediction. You think that like they're going to start the full stadiums and then there's going to be such an outbreak that it's dead? Yeah, I th- I, or I think, I think there's a good chance it won't happen at all. But I imagine that I really doubt that we'll be going in October. Ricketts, uh, Ricketts, Ricketts is, was disagreeing. Ricketts yeah. is having a game, buddy. Also, you think that uh, they're not going to have Ricketts? You think they're not going to have full stadiums in the SEC? I, mm. yeah, no, I mm. disagree, Pat. We'll uh, see. We'll see. I think there's going to be some full stadiums. You want to put some money on it? Uh, yeah. Put yeah, a hundy. Put I'm saying it. no full stadiums uh, as of October one. Ever. Not a single full stadium as of October one. Nor yeah, nor the whole October season. 1. I'll do 50 bucks. Okay, 50. All right, deal. 50 bucks. Shake hands. All right. Is that it, Will? Yeah, that's it on CFB. Okay. Guys, back by popular demand from three listeners that sent these in on Twitter. Travis, Rick Holt, and Hardo Hive legend and debate winner Big Ounce. Mm. He won, right? He won this debate. Yeah. He did. Is what the hell China? Yeah. Uh, so three stories from China. First up, Karim Galepsi, an Australian man in his 50s, was sentenced to death in China like this past week uh, for drug smuggling. He has been detained since 2013 when he was said by Chinese authorities to be found with several pounds of meth in the southern city of Guangzhou. And Galepsi was a former actor turned wealth advisor and I guess was also an influencer on Twitter yeah, up until he got detained in uh, 2013 and then well, fell off the face of the internet. That, that resume yeah. was really just a, a stepping stone uh, path towards drugs or and sales. Those are just things that he wasn't good at. Um, well, the thing is, had he done his drug smuggling in, in most other countries, I don't think he would have got the death penalty. But no, if you're uh, in China, yeah. if you're in if you're in communist China with methamphetamine, you got a plan, bro. Like he 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 would have gone down in other countries as well because he he's he's that's an out there move to have a ton of. See meth. the thing. Well, also, the thing look, about, at the, look at uh, the the regression of, of of he was like at first he's like a pro actor. He wasn't those things. Then he's selling insurance. Then he's Pat, like on the streets. He, you got to I mean, think, though, like the, the thing about a country that has the death penalty for this type of crime is probably someone's going to roll on you. And also, if they're I'm just going to assume torturing people, they're going to roll on you. Mm. So probably not a great idea. Um, official details are scarce. Shocking. But state media said he was detained on New Year's Eve 2013. What? So not a great not a great start to the New Year's for him at Guangzhou's uh Bayoun International Airport while trying to leave the country with about eight pounds of ice or eight kilograms of ice. Oh, Sorry. he uh, went and picked up cheap Chinese meth. Now I get it. Okay. Oh, he was taking it on the airport. Uh, his friends had no idea where he was. They thought he just disappeared because no one knew where he was in 2013. No one got the word out from China that he was in a fucking jail. So he had no way to communicate. So like for several years, people just thought he was missing. Um, and yeah, he got the death penalty last week. He has 10 days from last Wednesday, I guess, to appeal the case. Ooh. Not Not sure... I don't think it's going to go well for him. Um, so not good news for Karim. Next up, another drug story in China. China Spring, Texas, which is right by Waco. So I was fooled with the headline, guys. Uh, <laughs> and it's really two. It's, so it's two what the hell China, the countries, and then three what the hell China, the places. No, we get it, Mark. Gonna, It'll play. Yeah, It'll yeah, play. Yeah. All right. So in China Spring, officers were called in for an assault, and then they ended up discovering a meth lab. More meth. So, 
So more meth, meth, meth's baby. a worldwide problem. That's something we can uh, you know, focus on. Solidarity across the world. China, Texas, China, China. Mm -hmm. uh, when officers entered in search of a victim or suspect, they found the front door was wide open. Mm. Uh, and then they found a large amount of a crystal substance in plain view and $40,000 cash on a table. Just, How much uh, you want to bet? The, uh, I, don't, I don't know much about drug dealing. My drug dealing days yeah. were very limited, but uh, I know you usually keep the door closed. I, uh, that's yeah, I think so. especially yeah. if you're getting an allowed assault. That, that that the neighbors here. Yeah. Like a fist but fight what if you're on you... too much meth though? Because then that's the thing. You're that not going to want to close the door or Can pay attention your judgment. to the noise. Yeah. What if your ass is spun, Will? Uh, mm -hmm. So the cook got in a fight, I guess, with someone, and they both made a bunch of noise. Then left uh, and left forever. Then left the front door open. Uh, they found a meth lab. The police did in a garage, in the garage, and over two pounds of meth. Uh, there is one suspect the police are looking at, probably the owner or renter of the house who never came back. Uh, what the hell, China Spring? You have to burn and that house lot, down, you know, like, yeah, well, when they do, almost did themselves with the meth lab. No, yeah, I know. But if you, if, if you ever had a meth lab in a house, like it ruins the house. Yeah, Stinky yeah. house. Yeah. What does it smell yeah. like? I mean, like, I don't know. You're the only one that I, I've never done. Meth. Like melting face. Hmm. Um, and lastly, let's get back east where 20 Indian soldiers were killed at the India China border by Chinese troops. The massacre at the disputed border in the Himalayan mountains way up high is uh, the worst confrontation between the two countries in decades. A China spokesman said a clash took place after Indian soldiers uh, proactively or provocatively attacked uh, in an area <laughs> China considers under its control. And then obviously India said, no, they crossed the border into Indian territory and attacked us. So it was a, he said, uh, he said, or, you know, China said, India said, but mm -hmm. 20 Indian soldiers were killed. Also, apparently some Chinese soldiers were killed, but China's not commenting on how many are. Well, they're having officially official army skirmishes at the border. Probably uh, will lead to something else, is my guess. <laughs> what does provocatively yeah. killed mean? What does that imply? I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll get to it, Pat. A senior military official said some of the Indian soldiers were beaten to death with clubs embedded with nails. So they were clubbed to death uh, ah. in the mountains. With nails and the clash uh, didn't involve any shooting, so it was just like a like yeah. a violent like scrum where multiple people got murdered by hands and weapons. Provocative uh, implies that it might have been sexual in nature, but this is not. Well, sexual Well, I at don't all. know what they did to the bodies afterwards. Sounds also very intimate, all hand to hand. Yeah, very intimate, very true. intense. Hope they uh, potentially a large number of the Indian troops, up to seventeen, died from hypothermia while injured because the Chinese troops just left them mangled in the mountains and they didn't have any way of crawling home or calling for help, so they just died of. They froze to death. Uh, India is saying, obviously, that it's China's fault and they're pissed. India's foreign minister said India is very clear that all its activities are always within the Indian side. We expect the same on the Chinese side, which they didn't do. And Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Tuesday is headed to Hawaii. Uh, and he plans to he has a scheduled meeting, I guess, with the top diplomat of China, Yang Ji Chai, on Wednesday. Uh, at, I, I don't know if this if that, if that means it's today, probably, because based on the article. So today he's supposed well, to meet. Well, but China's time is weird. They're like five days in advance of us. But he's going to Hawaii. So I think it's today in Hawaii. Hmm. He's supposed to meet with Yang Ji Chi, where I hope his first question is, what the hell, China? Yeah. Yeah, he better bring yeah. an interpreter. He's not going to understand what the answer is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like. I would like to see how, like, uh, red Pompeo's face gets in meetings with, with – uh, <laughs> with other dignitaries. Yeah, probably pretty intense. Pretty stuff. rough. Yeah. But it'll be in Hawaii. Yeah. It'll be chill. All right, yeah. guys, this one's an interesting one from Hardo Hive member at 33J33. The Minnesota Freedom Fund, guys, they said that they spent, quote, well over $200,000 bailing out protesters. That was, of course, during the George Floyd. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, it's pretty good. During the George Floyd protests in uh, Minnesota earlier this month. Mm. Problem is, they received more than $30 million oh. in donations. Mm. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Where'd the, money, where'd the money go, Pat? Well, they don't know quite yet, Mark. The fund tweeted out on Monday... We're working on doing more. Uh, yeah, right. Right after they get back from our long, much-needed vacation. Uh, they also said the donations, quote, may, may be used to expand uh, legal support for those arrested or incarcerated uh, protesting the murder of George Floyd. Uh, key word there, guys, may. Uh, may. Let's, let's take it to the internet real quick. Yeah. Uh, at uh, unlearning to learn says, baby, the math, not mathin'. Uh, and maybe mm. that's true, um, but Solid Kwame, point. Kwame Holmes says, he brings an interesting point, says, small organizations don't have the capacity to move that much money that fast. And Kwame, if that is the case, maybe just come up with a plan first. Like, yeah, just yeah, don't come out and be like, maybe, 
maybe don't accept thirty million dollars in donations. Then, well, you can't. You can't really. Uh, I guess maybe you could, but you got the thirty. Just or come ask, out. ask, ask not to and, and disperse it to like twenty. You know, several different small organizations instead of one small organization that has all the money doesn't well, know what the fuck to do with uh, this it. This makes me very glad that I did my research before doing any donations. Uh, and we talked to Trinidad James about it, which you should listen to if you do want to make any donations, because he had much better advice than these people that donated to uh, the Minnesota Freedom Fund. Yeah. You can also probably just bail someone out yourself, right? Uh. Like that's, I've, bail I've bailed people out before. Seems time consuming. I yeah, I, we bailed a friend out together, and then yes. I think I fronted five hundred bucks of the thousand bucks, and then um, and then we had a keg party. You got the money back, and then you didn't give and me I the had money a keg back. Party you just it. had a keg party. No, I didn't give you the money back. I had a keg party. That wasn't cool. Yeah. Uh, you know yeah. what I've been having a hard time with, guys, recently. It's relaxing. Mm. Uh, I don't know about mm. you guys. Maybe it's what's going on in the world, but uh, I'm sure glad I found Caliper CBD. Now CBD helps you feel better without making drastic changes to your routine. Uh, it helps me get sleep, which is pretty much the most important thing you can do for your health. Not to mention it helps me feel less sore after a workout. And for a guy that consistently stops and starts working out routines with no consistency, I'm often sore. Uh, mm -hmm. But Caliper believes everyone deserves a simple way to feel better. And unlike CBD oils, Caliper CBD powder is completely tasteless and mixes easily in any food or drink. There's no weird taste, no oily residue or mouthfeel, and precisely 20 milligrams in each packet of Caliber CBD, you'll never question how much CBD you're taking again. I always have a glass of water with me throughout the day, uh, like a, one of these metal containers. So I slip a little Caliber in there at noon, so I'm not oh, yeah. grouchy to my co-host when we tape the show, and then I do a whole packet when I wrap the show, so it's just smooth sailing ahead. Guys, it's going to pour like uh, Send him some more samples, Caliber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to pour Shut like Shut up, ten. Mark. <laughs> 10 packets on my sandwiches, like right before the show, uh, once the baby's here. Yeah, you, oh, you yeah. can't even tell. You just be chilled out. Hey, Big Cat, Big Cat's still pumping out content. You got no excuse, Will. Yeah, yeah it's true. Well, I haven't had a, a week off in uh, the two over two years we've done the show, so that'll be my excuse. Mm -hmm. right, just guys. long, just, just a few, few days here and there. We're going to get it for you, Will. It's clinically proven that you absorb 450% more CBD with caliber CBD powder compared to tinctures. Tinctures are garbage. Don't get them. And it comes in affordable 10 and 30 count packs. Uh, you can get started for just under 20 bucks. Get 20% off your first order when you use promo code FACTOR at tricaliper.com slash factor. So that's tricaliper.com slash factor. Throw a promo code factor in there. Uh, you can try Caliper CBD risk-free for 30 days. If you don't love it, they'll give you a free refund. Tricaliper.com slash factor. Yeah, if you don't like it, send us a DM and we'll and we'll read it because Just that's how confident your, I am. Send us your caliper. I, yeah, honestly. so yeah, I'm confident you won't you won't be able to do that with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't. No, you won't. All right, guys, you know where we're headed. It's What the Fuck Wednesday, and that means we're going to Space Mountain. And this, yeah. this, this Space Mountain is brought to you by Hardo Hive member Charles. Thank you, Charles. And it's one of my favorite ones uh, I've ever seen. Uh, and the, why is because there's oxygen on Mars, fellas. Do you, tell that to Cohagen. That's not Whoa. true. Whoa. Yeah, tell that to Cohagen, right? Who's Cohagen? Is that your total, total recall? recall? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not enough to not enough to not like uh, liquefy your body in the in the spot or freeze it's your it eyes and, pop out of your head. Right. So that still will happen. But there's uh, oxygen like 50 miles off the surface of Mars. So how okay. do we how okay. do we how do we know that a trippy green what's called a night glow uh, surrounds the planet just like Earth, which means that there's oxygen in the atmosphere. It's just like way higher up off the planet than on the surface. And uh, so here's a French scientist. He said. One of the brightest emissions seen on Earth stems from the night glow, more specifically from oxygen atoms emitting a particular wavelength of light that has never been seen around another planet. However, this emission has been predicted to exist at Mars for around 40 years, and thanks to TGO, we have found it, said Jean-Claude Girard of the University of Liège in Belgium. Uh, he's nice. a lead research. Very good, so. Will. I don't mm -hmm. trust him, but very good. Yeah, uh, look, again, I can tell you what's going to happen on Mars pretty easily. Like, hmm. they're going to terraf terraform it or whatever, and it'll be some sort of, like, bubble or, like, tent where, you know, like, oh, look, we're, you know, we're able to live in the bubble or tent. What if they then, got the oxygen closer to the But then the some explore, well, that, well, if they, then then we'll just skip straight to that. They don't know what diseases or parasites or monsters are there. You so at some point, 
At some point, someone's going to get the parasite, or ghosts. and they're going to go into the terraformed area, and at that point, they're going to need an industrial-sized supply of caliper, because if you think everyone's stressed <laughs> with COVID-19, and there's a fucking earth that you can like hide in, you can't hide very far in the terraformed one, but one kilometer what if square. What alien COVID-19 thing. makes you a superhuman? We are what like, if, I hope, I, what if? I hope it just... Hope it just instantly kills you. Hadn't and doesn't considered that. You. Hadn't considered that. Mm, had you, Mark? Okay. The, the TGO, stupidest thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. The TGO, which is what Jean Claude Girard said they found the, the 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 night glow with, is the European and Russian space program's Trace Gas Orbiter, uh, which is like a, a satellite that surrounds Mars and it just like takes pictures of the atmosphere. And basically, what this means, guys, is that everybody, everybody has their eyes on Mars now. To the point where mm-hmm. they're meticulously mapping out every part of the planet, including the atmosphere, the underground tunnels. And uh, we've almost entered the age of space barons, where countries are just going to like mine the fuck out of Mars and the moon. And I mean, personally, I'm kind of excited about it, uh, which brings up what could go wrong. Those are going to be You're some right. rough, rack, rough, rough, rough necks. Yes. Like the, the oil rig guys pirates. are tough. Space yeah, rough like, yeah. sp- like. Traveling the sea to explore was scary. I'm not tra- traveling space. Badass. Yeah. So yeah. that brings up the real question, right? People are going to be asking themselves in a couple generations, which one are you going to do? Are you going to be an asteroid miner? Are you going to be a Martian colonist and miner? Or are you going to be a moon man? And the difference is here. The astro- hmm. asteroid miner is going to be like a space pirate because it's like funded by a rich guy but you might have to fight any other government. The Martian guy is going to be part of the Musk empire because we Mm -hmm. all know Elon Musk. Right. That's it. He's he's emperor on Mars. And then the moon man, you probably have to be like a Space Force trooper. So, yeah. Well, with that space part, you're going to have to fight a bunch of Musk's people, too, because Musk's going to send. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, they're going to send people out to mine. And you know they're going to know like some nerdy martial art, the Musk people. Mm. Space pirate. Easy easy choice. I'm good. I would like. Yeah, I want to like be on a quest for something i want like i want to be questing for like a a metal like a rare or precious metal or Mm -hmm. like a uh i don't know like some sort of uh elixir stressful Uh, job space pirate every day is different you know you would be in all these situations doing that pat just for different people that's true but Mm -hmm. i'm but you know i'm a freelance guy i I don't like to have a boss you guys are both space asteroid miners i'm going with elon because i have a feeling his empire is just going to dominate space so i feel like you get in on the ground floor uh, with the with the dominant uh, guy, and then you know, safe choice. Yeah, none of us, learn- none of us pick space force. By the way, so I uh, got some work to do. Space force. Better learn how to spot people that have parasites and steer <laughs> clear of them. All right, let's get to five star reviews and voicemails. Um, all right, so let's do the reviews first. Uh, what we got here? What we got here? Uh, first one is from definitely not a fake review. Title is Great Show. It says, Great show where four overweight, never nudes share news stories. Pretty, is, that a, is that a dare? I don't care. Uh, never nudes. Ne- that's that's a fantastic um, arrested development uh, reference. You guys you guys know the never nude. No, I don't I don't get it. Does that mean like we're not nude on camera? What no, no, no. David Cross, he played a never nude on arrested development. It means he never takes his clothes off. He always wore a um, pair of Daisy Dukes. This is Even during sex? Would never take him off. He's a never nude. Hmm. Uh, never fan- nudes. Fantastic show. Fantastic joke. Uh, I get nude occasionally. It's just not impressive. Occasionally. I've seen you naked more <laughs> times than women I've yeah. dated. Same. COVID-19 has been a lot of nudity in uh, my house. All right. Uh, you Austin your, your 406 says. <laughs> He's got such a little butt very for such small a big man. Rest, yeah. yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah. That's true. Well, does have a little butt. All right. Austin 406 says, how I get my news. Five stars. Thanks, boys. Only a matter of time till you fellas make it big. The cream always rises to the top. I get that reference. That's my Ooh, cup of so, Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Austin 406. Uh, and then lastly, from Bannister, Adam, comma, Adam. So Adam Bannister. Grand. Five stars. Grand. Grand. G-R- yeah. It's got to be some like right. ac- acronym. What? The grandest podcast there is. I don't know what that. If he's the trying Grandel. To, if he's trying to get me to say that, you win because I don't know what grand. Yeah. Is. If you tricked us into saying grand, you've won. And See, grand it's indeed. It's a Lord of the Rings reference, right? I think. Anyway. No. 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 Okay. Let's get into. There's three voicemails. Let's get the into long it. giant long battery. Giant yeah. No. Battery, yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. The grand. grand. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's like the, oh, All it's right. like the flaming oh, like pig that they yeah, knocked through the door. Oh, we're like the oh, evil, like the, the orc battering ram. Whoa. That's badass. <laughs> it was, uh, 
It was the guy who was Sauron's guys, like battering ram, the guy before Sauron from the. So he's saying we're like evil Trojan horses. He's saying we can knock down anyone's door We're and get infecting in their heads. people's yeah. minds. Yeah. The hammer mm-hmm. of the underworld. He's saying we are the hammer of the underworld. Whoa. Okay. And it could it could also be anything else. But let's get into some voicemails. Oh, it could also just mean that we're grinding. Will, Will, we're gonna get into some voicemails. Hey, this is Kalen from Maine. Uh, I don't appreciate the Maine being backwards comment the other day. That's the, uh... Oh. Mark's got that's the voicemails the, figured out. That's the voicemails. Maybe it's that Mark's got Someone's a pizza. Right He's got now. stuff across pizza arriving. They're calling him. Hang on. Oh, we're getting, you're getting someone a call right now. Someone's calling the Google Voice. Yeah, someone's calling. That's the noise it makes. All right, we're going to replay that voicemail. Hang on. Hi, this is Kalen from Maine. Uh, I don't appreciate the Maine being backwards comment the other day, or on the Friday episode, so I just wanted to come in and air my grievances. Maine's a great place. It's not backwards at all. It's, uh, you know, much less backwards than much of rural, the rural south or the rural Midwest. So, um, just wanted to put that out there that I appreciate that comment. Uh, I've been a listener for years and years now. I'm a huge fan. I DM'd you guys on Instagram several times. My name's Kalen. I'm sure, um, you know, I talked to Pat recently on Instagram. You know, love the work, love the show. Maine's not a backward place. Get that shit out of your mouth. Thanks. Have a good weekend. We, we only, Hate on Maine because we love it so much. Well, who, who I don't remember calling Maine backwards. Who who, who might do have, you think? Who do you think? <sighs> Pat Pat makes fun of every state with no rhyme or reason. You bring up a state and Pat shits on it, even if he likes the state. It's a hundred percent. They're called I, takes. I, Mark, they're called let me, takes. Let me, yeah. and you got to wait, 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 wait. Before Pat shits on Maine again, let me say yeah. I've I vacationed there last summer. Uh, you know, less than a week, of course. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but yes, it was. It, it was a beautiful place. Portland was a surprisingly nice city. The lobsters were yeah. phenomenal. I mean, it was. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you talk to your boy who you're Instagram chatting with? Because he's the one that said you're backwards. By the way, I think Stephen King writes all of his books based out of Maine. So maybe it's not backwards, but it sure is fuck haunted. Weeds legal? All this, B- lobsters right? is really oh, nothing. I think they have more Cas- lakes per capita is than Castle any state. Rock, is Castle Rock Maine? I think he's. I think it's Maine. You, yeah. yeah. I think he does. A, From the guy that read 27 Stephen King books. They have and mooses. Claims to be his favorite yeah. author. You don't know? Yeah. yeah. Moose. I'm pretty sure it's Moose. Maine. And loons. Moose and loons. Well, loons, it's a great bird. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, well, what was, well, I mean, Pat, Pat well, do you, you, have anything anything nice, you have anything nice to say about Maine? Pat? I hear there's a really great theater there in Maine, in, Port, in the Portland. Um, and uh, yeah, couple, I heard the uh-huh. lakes are A couple creamy, creameries, too. Some uh-huh. Patagonia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Two more to go. The, yeah. Good morning, gentlemen. This is Kevin from New York again. Um, I was out walking my dog this morning, and by surprise, I was on your uh, uh, your show. So I want to thank you for putting me on. And I'm also ashamed because you know the discussion you had afterwards reali- made me realize that uh, I have abandoned my hatred for all rival high schools in Northern Virginia, and that's not the way my parents raised me. And it's sad. For the record, I did not go to Oakton High School. I went to Madison High School which is about two miles down the road from Oakton in a much smaller school. So we got treated like Oakton's uh, annoying little brother, although, to be fair, we probably were. But whatever, that's not the point. The point is, thank you for reinstilling uh, my hatred for all hi- rival high schools. With that said, uh, fuck Oakton High School, fuck Marshall High School, and you know what, for good measure, fuck Fairfax High School. I never really liked those guys either. So anyways, uh, thanks again for putting me on the show. Uh, love what you guys do and keep doing it. Take care. Okay, so he's the guy that told us Jacob Fry. Yeah, he says Fry from. Yeah, but he says Fry because he well, went to middle school with him and he, he went to Oakton. He didn't yeah. say fuck Herndon, did he? He didn't. Say no, fuck. he didn't. He did not. You know okay. what? He knows better. He you know knows what? Better. You could add Robinson to that list too. And oh, also fuck Robinson. And also look, listen to this. You know what? I forgot about Oakton. We used to call it Jokedon. And oh, that's yes. always Big so time. good. That's always so good. Anytime you're talking to an Oakton guy, just be like, okay, Jokedon. It just gets them every time. They can't say anything. Jokedon is uh, you can't recover from Jokedon. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. What what was the uh what was the smart kid one? Thomas Jefferson. Uh yeah, Thomas, Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson. That was that was the worst. And what was that? They one? had a good 
they had a good chance because they weren't very good at sports, but they were, you know, they were like the gifted and talented kids that rose up to that system. And uh, their chant was, hey, hey, it's OK. you all be working for us someday. Yeah. Right. So, so they, they were just then. bragging about how they'd eventually get good. They jobs, would get smashed. Giant every game. Yeah. Yeah. But they would get smashed every game. They also had a really good chance. One one time in soccer, one of our guys had like a giant cast on his arm and they all started from the crowd. They all started calling him Mega Man, which I, I was laughing at. While well, right. They were always funny. That was great. But they just would lose yeah. every game like 70 to nothing. It doesn't matter the sport. They yeah. would lose 70 or nothing yeah no for sure yeah. for sure but they're probably doing pretty good right now oh, you, guys sure. remember last week. you guys remember when, <laughs> when herndon battled uh uh richard montgomery and it's academic and we made that sign it said it was the richard montgomery rockets and we made a dick sign that said dick rockets, rockets. yeah made yeah. it on tv yeah. that was great yeah we got on there sandra bullock made her first start there all right here we go last one what's up boys it's Matthew McConaughey again from the Carolinas. You, you did such a kick-ass job on my last question uh, about the wrestling names. I think the lawnmower or whatever it was. Great finishing move. Uh, I thought I'd fall back up because I also thought the hard factor sounded like a really badass 90s hip-hop group, like record label. And so I just want to know what would your guys' rap names be and um, who's shook? I guess Maybe Puff Daddy, but I think, would you rather be Shug or Puff Daddy? Anyway, have a great fucking day, boys. So he wants to know what our 90s rappers' names would be. And great also, question. would you be Suge Knight or Puff Daddy? Shug, we want to use intim- force, sheer force. Uh, right. You want to be st- you want to be stealing songwriting credits back yeah, to from, each their from own. Rob Van Winkle from that. Vanilla Ice. Shug Knight, I want to I want to be hanging people over the window, Dude, uh, the, over the balcony. Sh- Shug he- wasn't on the tracks, bro. Uh, Sh- Shug wasn't all up in the video, and Shug Shug's not all worth saying, half a billion dollars. All I'm saying is, if if I'm gonna kill someone. I'm going to do it and everyone's going to know right, about it. So we're it. split on that. Allegedly, we're allegedly, we're right? Sp- Puff sp- Daddy, right? Puff Daddy. All right. Um, uh, so what, what's your rapper name? Who's going first? Go. Go, Pat. Go ahead, Pat. Okay. Uh, my rapper name is going to be uh, from the 90s uh, Rumpel Skillskin. And the R U M P of Rump is in capital. So you, because you know I like ass. And also the skill, S K I L L, is going to be capitalized Rumpel Skillskin. Either that or um, Blue Box, because I'm all about that cheddar. Blue, blue box, blue box, like craft like macaroni and cheese. Yeah, no, I get it. Blue All about box that cheddar, is, never better. Maniac mac, oh, mac, mac, mac cheese. Yeah, I didn't yeah. Even okay. Get it. All right, yeah. well, all right. What you got, Will? All right, I would go. I'm going to keep it pretty simple uh, because I'm. I've got the same name as a '90s rapper. I'd be Big Willie style. I'd have songs about summertime in Miami, and probably get into doing a little acting on the side. Probably get a C your and name, D too, Will. Your your name is literally Will Smith. So yeah, that makes so. sense. I um, had to endure welcome to Miami jokes uh, my entire life. Well, since I guess ninety three, whatever year he released it. So, well, since you've us, gotten yeah. since you've gotten made fun of for it, you might as well make some money off of it. Come nineties rapper, mm-hmm. right? Right. That makes sense. All right, I would do uh, Master B, which was not allowed to be my AOL screen name in elementary and middle school uh, because my dad said, "I know what you're trying to do there," referring to masturbation. Master B, get it? And what I was really doing uh, naively was I was doing a play on my favorite rapper at the time, Master P. Oh. My last name is my my last name. I'm saying, oh, my last name is Borgie, so I wanted to be Master B. I'm glad he stopped me from doing that because that would have been embarrassing. You but I would go with Master. Just a, yeah. a total honeypot in the in the mm-hmm. AOL chat rooms. They would have been yeah, all... age, sex, location, ooh, oh, ooh, left or right handed, right? Um, Eight and, year old uh, Master B, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a that's an easy target. Uh, yeah, the segue is too have, easy for you. Don't creepers. have to be an eBay executive to figure that one out. Um, so uh, I would be Master B, and then I would get back at my dad by only rapping about masturbation. Uh, the whole the, every, that's all I would rap. About. Would be getting back at your dad, or <laughs> getting back at society, really getting back at society. Other rappers rap about sex. I'm a solo artist. I like to rap about masturbation, and that's gonna do it for Hard Factor. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, We do have a couple more interviews coming up this week that should be, I believe, on Florida Man Friday. Tomorrow we'll be back with uh, another show and a radio show on Sirius XM. So get signed up for free 
Sirius XM Radio, we do a unique show on there, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 11 a.m. to noon. Unique, not in like it's weird and artsy, unique like from different content, New content. The podcasts. Oh, and yeah. amazing content, debates, listener debates, and Barstool mm-hmm. personality debates. And it's a free four-month trial for Sirius Ooh, XM for yeah. anybody. So just I sign think, up. Pow. I think this week, this week, tomorrow, I think we have Ellie Schnitt versus Tommy, oh, right? Smokes, Tommy Smokes. Yeah. I believe we're, they're debating on Thursday. Yeah, that should be great. Yeah, no, uh, but not you guys, unique thanks. in the way that was the backhanded uh, compliment the, with, of my high school superlative of most unique, which retrospectively, Ooh, yeah. Most unique's not a good one to no, get. I know. All right, uh, well, thanks so much for listening, as always, and have a great fucking day.